Most experts believe that when playing Hold'em, you shouldn't put all your money in on a draw. Well, that's true in some cases, but it doesn't necessarily apply to monster draws. A monster draw is one in which you have at least 14 outs that will improve your hand. For example, let's say you put your opponent on pocket aces or pocket kings. You, on the other hand, you're holding six, seven hearts, and the flops come three, eight, nine with two hearts. To improve to the winner, you could hit one of nine remaining hearts, plus an additional six cards to fill the straight. Now, that would be considered a monster draw since you had 15 outs with two cards still to come. In fact, it would make your hand the best hand in a sense. Not in the traditional sense, since seven high doesn't beat a pair of aces, obviously, but your hand will win the pot more often than the aces will. In fact, it's actually a little over 56% of the time that your monster draw is going to win the pot. As a general rule, 13 outs after the flop makes you very close to 50-50, 14 outs makes you a small favorite, and as we discussed before, 15 outs makes you a decent favorite over your opponent. So, in knowing these numbers, we should now start thinking about how we want to play these types of hands after the flop. Betting drawing hands after the flop is often called semi-bluffing, but it isn't exactly bluffing when your drawing hand is the best hand, is it? These plays will help add deception to your game. People will have a much more difficult time putting you on a hand. For example, let's say that I raise before the flop with pocket aces and the flop comes 9-6-3 with two hearts. Normally that's an excellent flop for a big pair, as the only real threat at this point is someone holding a set. Now, if someone is in fact holding a set, in this situation, my chance of winning the pot will be slim to none. I'd have only a 9% chance of hitting one of the two remaining aces to win the pot. So what then would I do if a very tight player goes all in against me on a flop like that? Well, if my opponent is super tight, I'd probably have to fold my aces and that would be the right play. What if I was playing against a player who I know will push big draws though? What would I do then? Playing my aces against an opponent like that would be much more difficult. While it's easy to put a tight player on a set and fold, I might be more likely to call a looser player who raises me. You want that loose, deceptive image. That way, when you do flop a set, your opponents may give you action thinking you might be raising with one of your monster draws. It's also important to note that you should make your aggressive bet on the flop and not wait for the turn. The reason being is that your odds to win the hand with only one card to come decrease significantly. A hand with 15 outs after the flop is a 56% favorite, but if you don't improve on the turn, that number would drop all the way down to 34%. That number is so low that if your opponent makes a large bet against you on the turn, he could actually shut you out of the hand, something he couldn't do to you on the flop. 